And during the week, there was a report of a vehicle powered by compressed natural gas, which exploded near a fuel station in Naduawa, a town on the outskirts of the state's capital in Bedin City. Three people were reported injured in the blast, and the presidential CNG initiative says the car was an illegally modified vehicle. Sources say the explosion was traced to a cylinder that had been fabricated by a welder without proper approval. The organization said the police and regulatory authorities are undertaking a painstaking investigation into the incident. It comes on the heels of concerns raised by some members of the public over the safety of compressed natural gas, or CNG. Okay, we're having with us in the studio the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Oluwe Mimo Oshanikmi. Very warm welcome to Newsnight, and nice having you again. Uh, this is a worrisome development. Should there really be any cause for alarm uh, because of these uh, CNG compressed natural gas incidents that happened in uh, um, Edo State, in Benin City? Should the public be worried? No. There's no cause for alarm. The public should not be worried. What, why that is? If you listen to the report, the report stated that the, the gas, the, the vehicle was modified. And again, the cylinder was, was put together, weathered together by someone who was not authorized to do so. So we've always been saying that for you to convert, for whoever wants to convert, to a patronize accredited, uh, uh, accredited workshop, or accredited conversion centers because there is no way you can go and modify something that is not made for it and it's not fit for a purpose it will never work so not only in gas in any in any uh, area of human endeavor if you cut corner there's going to be consequences and that is what happened here because this is not a cylinder made for for compressed natural gas, it's not made for CNG. That's why the Standard Organization of Nigeria released about 77 standards that to guide the operation of uh, CNG in Nigeria, including conversion, maintenance, dispensing of gas, uh, refueling, and storage of gas, everything from beginning to the end. Okay, uh, let, let, let me ask you, uh, Olu Wemimo. Now, where is the place of the Nigerian Automotive Development uh, Council in, you know, these revolutionized uh, transport or vehicular system, the okay. CNG? The world is talking EV, electric vehicle. Why we, you know, it's like we're behind time, would you say? Okay, two questions in one. Let me take our the, the, the position of... Uh, uh, the council in this, in CNG. So the council accredits workshop that we do the conversion. So, and apart from that, you know, the council permits or give license to assembler. So every assembler that have been uh, permitted by or licensed by the council can do conversion because they can as well produce the vehicle so that it will be uh, CNG uh, compliant. compliant directly from the factory. So also, they can convert a, a PMS power vehicle to CNG power vehicle. So apart from that, we have some people, some workshop, or some personnel that have been trained to carry out this conversion. So the CNG, the council, have to do the, the accreditation. And while we are doing the accreditation, we are doing the accreditation, we are looking at the workshop as well as the personnel. Because if you have the workshop, you have the implement, you have the tools, and you don't have the technical know-how, you cannot be accredited. And if you have the technical know-how, you know how to do it, but you know the process, and you can carry out the, the conversion, but you don't have the tools that you are going to use, you are not going to be accredited. So for, you, for us to accredit you, you must know what to do, and then have the tools to do it. You then, lay the guidelines Yes, now. yes. You lay the guidelines. We, yes, you have the guidelines. Okay. Bef before we accredit you, we list the guidelines. And when you make the guideline, then we, we, we accredit you. And we must, you have, we, we confirm that you have 
you have trained your personnel, you have trained someone who will be able to do mechanical part of it, the electrical part of it, and the digital part of it, because you are still going to calibrate after the final uh, conversion. Okay. Tell us, uh, before you go to the second question, why, or rather, maybe I think I should allow you answer the second question. Why CNG as against EV that the world is, you know, accelerating now? Okay, it's just like uh, you have a child and the child have to first of all crawl, sit down, crawl before running, uh, walking and then running. We, we have to start from what do we have in abundance and what we have in abundance now in Nigeria, we have gas in abundance. I can tell you that about 30 states in Nigeria have gas in abundance. So we have gas in abundance. And again, to produce gas for us is far, far cheaper compared to producing uh, either power or uh, uh, crude oil, that is PMS. So when you look at it, it the cost of, of uh, CNG is far, far cheaper. And when you compare it now, I can tell you that where, uh, if you use CNG compared to PMS, your cost of powering for a particular distance is going to be reduced by about 75%. So for now, this, the best alternative we have. And for EV, we are not discarding EV entirely. We are doing EV. And let me tell you, as you are doing CNG, you are indirectly doing uh, EV because if you have EV, you are going to have infrastructure that is going to support it. And the infrastructure, part of this infrastructure is charging station. And if you have charging station, charging station is going to be powered. Uh, CNG can also power, power the, charging the charging station. station. Very so beautiful. As we so are doing the CNG, we are indirectly prepared ground for electric vehicles. Oh, fantastic. Very quickly, how many uh, assembly plants in Nigeria are already assembling uh, CNG vehicles? Yes, all the assembly plants that we have are assembly uh, can do conversion. But apart from that, we have accredited about 77, and we are doing more. And why, why we do the, we, ta we take our time to make sure that we visit your, 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 or your facility and ensure that you have uh, what you're supposed to have. And again, okay. we are doing training. Okay, okay. okay. sorry, I mean, uh, I'm being uh, asked to wind up, but what I asked, motor assembly plants, how many, you know, are already manufacturing CNG vehicles? So all the assembly plants we have are manufacturing CNG vehicles. Okay. It depends, most of them so based on demand. So we're going to see a drop in the cost of uh, uh, brand new vehicles in the country? No. With a cheaper gas? Uh, Why are we no, not no, 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 no. It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to drop the cost of a new vehicle. Because cheaper gas means the cost, the cost of fueling is going to ship, is going to be cheaper. What is going, we are go, the drop we are going to witness is the cost of transport fare. Because what constitutes the greater part of the, of the cost of maintaining vehicle is the cost of uh, uh, fuel. And by the time you drop the cost of fuel, it's going to have positive impact on the cost of uh, transport fare. Well, I'm sure we're going to be interrogating uh, more on uh, the issue of the uh, cost benefits on uh, uh, CNG, the compressed natu natural gas uh, 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 automated uh, industry. Uh, Director General Olu Wemimo Oshanikmi is the DG Nigerian Automotive Development Council of Nigeria. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. On.